Hi there. I'm Jason Ayers, founder and president of Optionsource.net, and thank you for joining us to learn about the collar strategy. The collar strategy, also known as a hedge wrap, is composed of two distinct protective strategies, protective puts and covered calls. Investors wishing to implement the collar would sell a call and purchase a put while owning the underlying security. Normally, investors will select a call with a strike price above the underlying price and a put with a strike price below. The strike price choices will affect the cost of the hedge as well as the protection it provides. These strikes are referred to as the floor and the ceiling of the position, and the stock is collared between the two strikes. The collar strategy is for holders or buyers of a stock who are concerned about a correction and wish to hedge the long stock position. The collar strategy is meant to stabilize the price of the underlying security, not to profit from a directional move. As a result, it is considered to be volatility neutral. The put strike establishes a minimum exit price should the investor need to liquidate in a downturn. On the other hand, the call strike sets an upper limit on stock gains. The sale of the call option is meant to reduce the cost of the protection provided by the long put. However, the investor should be prepared to relinquish the shares if the stock rallies above the call strike. Let's first look at an example. Let's assume that shares of XYZ are currently trading at $40. With that in mind, the investor may be concerned about a possible short-term drop in the share value but wishes to hold on to the position to benefit from longer-term profit potential. In order to offset the near-term risk, the investor may elect to create a caller using a one-month 4250 call option and a one-month 3750 put option, which are both trading at 25 cents. If we assume the investor owns 100 shares of XYZ, which were originally purchased at $40, a covered call position is created by selling the one-month 4250 call option and collecting 25 cents per share. This credit is then applied to the purchase of the one month 37.50 strike put option also valued at 25 cents per share. As a result, the cost of the put protection is offset by the call premium collected. It is important to understand that this may not always be the case as different strike prices with varying option premiums may be selected depending upon the objectives of the investor. In this example, commission costs are excluded. As a result of the caller, the investor has limited the downside risk on the stock position to $37.50, but has also limited the upside profit potential on the stock at $42.50. This risk graph illustrates the potential profit and loss of the caller strategy. The maximum loss is limited for the term of the caller. The worst that can happen is for the stock price to fall below the put strike which prompts the investor to exercise the put and sell the stock at the floor price, which corresponds with the put strike. If the stock had originally been bought at a much lower price, which is often the case for a long-term holding, this exit price might actually result in a profit. The short call would expire worthless. The actual loss would be the difference between the floor price and the stock purchase price, less the net premium paid to establish the caller. On the other hand, the maximum gain is also limited for the term of the strategy. The short-term maximum gains are reached just as the stock price rises to the call strike. The net profit remains the same no matter how much higher the stock might close. The only difference is the outcome. If the stock goes above the call strike, the investor will be assigned on the call and liquidate the stock at the ceiling or the call strike. The profit would be the ceiling price, less the stock purchase price, less the net premium paid to establish the caller. If the stock were to close exactly at the call strike, it would expire worthless, and the stock would probably remain in the account. The profit or loss leading up to that point would be identical, but from that day forward, the investor would still continue to face a stock owner's risk and rewards. In principle, the strategy breaks even if, at expiration, the stock is above or below its initial level by the amount of the debit or credit. This table reflects the performance of the caller example we looked at earlier using various stock prices at expiration. Notice that in this example, the maximum profit is capped at $2.50 per share, regardless of how much the share value appreciates, while losses are contained at $2.50 per share, despite how much the share value depreciates. Many investors may wish to hedge the upside risk associated with a short stock position. 
In this case, a reverse caller may be used, which is in fact the mirror image of the caller strategy we just reviewed. As with the caller strategy, the reverse caller also involves two distinct option strategies. To offset the risk of an increase in the underlying share value, a long call option may be purchased to establish a maximum risk. A put option can then be sold short and the premium collected used to offset the cost of the protective call. Normally, investors will select a call with a strike price above the underlying price and a put with a strike price below. The strike choices will affect the cost of the hedge as well as the protection it provides. These strike prices are referred to as the ceiling and floor of the position, and the stock is also said to be collared between the two strikes. The reverse collar strategy is used by investors who are short a stock and are concerned about an increase in the share price and wish to hedge their short position. The call strike establishes a maximum exit price should the stock price increase in value. On the other hand, the put strike sets a lower limit on the profit potential of the short stock position. The sale of the put option is meant to reduce the cost of the protection provided by the long call. However, the investor should be prepared to buy back the shares if the stock drops below the put strike. In this example, we will assume that the investor is short shares of XYZ at $40 and wishes to hedge the risk associated with an increase in share value. The investor observes that a one-month 4250 strike call is asking 25 cents, while a one-month 3750 strike put is bidding 25 cents. The investor will sell the $37.50 strike put and collect the $0.25 cent premium. The credit can then be used to purchase the $42.50 strike call option at $0.25. Cents. By creating this reverse caller, the upside risk has been limited to $42.50 while the profit is limited to the $37.50 strike sold. This risk graph illustrates the potential profit and loss of the reverse caller strategy. The maximum loss is limited for the term of the reverse caller. The worst that can happen is for the stock price to rally above the strike price of the call, which prompts the investor to exercise the call and buy the stock at the ceiling price, which corresponds to the call strike. The actual loss would be the difference between the strike price of the call and the price at which the stock was shorted, plus the net premium paid to establish the reverse caller. On the other hand, the maximum gain is also limited for the term of the strategy. The short-term maximum gains are reached just as the stock price drops to the put strike. The net profit remains the same no matter how much lower the stock might close, only the position outcome might differ. If the stock drops below the put strike, the investor will be assigned on the put and buy to cover the short stock position at the put strike. The profit would be the price that the shares were shorted at, less the put strike price, less the net premium paid to establish the reverse collar. If the stock were to close exactly at the put strike, it would expire worthless, and the short stock position would probably remain in the account. The profit and loss leading up to that point would be identical, but from that day forward, the investor would still continue to face the risks and rewards associated with the short sale of the stock. In principle, the strategy breaks even if, at expiration, the stock is above or below the price at which it was shorted by the amount of the cost of the reverse collar. This table reflects the performance of the reverse caller example we looked at earlier using various stock prices at expiration. Notice that in this example, the maximum profit of the short position is capped at $2.50 per share, regardless of how much the share value drops, while losses are contained at $2.50 per share, despite how much the share value rallies. A caller strategy that is implemented using currency options is referred to as a cylinder. Canadian investors holding assets valued in U.S. dollars and companies with outstanding receivables in U.S. dollars are at risk of a depreciating U.S. dollar. Conversely, Canadian importers with outstanding U.S. dollar payables are at risk of an appreciating U.S. dollar. In both cases, they may wish to hedge their currency risk using the cylinder strategy. In Canada, USX options reflecting the US dollar Canadian dollar exchange rate are available and will be used in the examples to follow. A Canadian importer may wish to hedge against an increase in the US dollar Canadian dollar exchange rate and purchase USX call options to offset the risk. 
U.S. export options may then be sold and the premium collected used to offset the cost of the protective calls. If different strike prices are selected, the risk-reward profile will resemble a reverse collar. Both Canadian investors holding U.S. assets and Canadian exporters expecting payment in U.S. dollars are at risk of a decrease in the U.S. dollar-Canadian dollar exchange rate. In both scenarios, U.S. put options may be purchased to offset the depreciation of the U.S. dollar. U.S. call options may then be sold and the premium collected used to offset the cost of the protective puts. If different strike prices are selected, the risk-reward profile would resemble a collar. Investors and business owners may wish to fix a specific exchange rate for an acceptable cost. A USX cylinder can be applied to lock in an exchange rate months in advance. This involves the simultaneous purchase and sale of a call and put at the same USX strike price. With the US dollar Canadian dollar exchange rate hovering at 1.0500, a Canadian importer may be required to pay 1 million US dollars in three months' time. The importer is at risk if the US dollar increases in value before the payment is due since the conversion from Canadian dollars to US dollars will cost more. To offset this risk, the importer considers the cylinder strategy and decides to purchase 100 USX call options at the 105 strike price, expiring in three months. These calls may be listed at 2.75 cents. To help offset the cost of the call options, the importer considers selling short 100 105 strike USX put options with three months until expiration. These puts may be listed at 2.50 cents. The purchase of the long call options would cost the importer $27,500 Canadian. However, by selling the put options, $25,000 Canadian is credited to the account. The net cost of the cylinder is $2,500 Canadian. This table reflects the impact of a fluctuation in the exchange rate over the three-month period. Notice that regardless of how high or low the US dollar Canadian dollar exchange rate moves, the importer has locked in the conversion at 1.0500 for a cost of $2,500 Canadian. Regardless of the fluctuation in the exchange rate, the currency conversion for the US dollar buyer is fixed at 105 or 1.0500 US dollars. The cost to fix the exchange rate for the three-month period is limited to the net debit of the cylinder. In this example, we will look at an exporter expecting a $1 million payment in three months' time and a current exchange rate of 1.0500. To offset the risk, the exporter considers the purchase of 100 US put options at the 105 strike price, expiring in three months. These puts may be listed at 2.85 cents. To help offset the cost of the put options, the exporter considers selling short 100 USX 105 strike call options with three months until expiration. These calls may be listed at 2.55 cents. The purchase of the long put options would cost the exporter $28,500 Canadian. However, by selling the call options, $25,500 Canadian is credited to the account. The net cost of the caller is $3,000 Canadian. This table reflects the impact of a fluctuation in the exchange rate over the three-month period. Notice that regardless of how high or low the US dollar Canadian dollar exchange rate moves, the exporter has locked in the conversion at 1.0500 for a cost of $3,000 Canadian. Regardless of the fluctuation in the exchange rate, the currency conversion for the US dollar buyer is fixed at 105 or 1.0500 US dollars. The cost to fix the exchange rate for the three-month period is limited to the net debit of the cylinder. For more information on hedging currency risks, please review the Hedging Your U.S. Investments Using Currency Options and Hedging Cash Flow with Currency Options videos.